All right, so I talked before in a previous video about how there was only a couple companies that did the ECU and wiring harness for the VQ swap so that you have a standalone harness. And I didn't think that was right. So <laughs> I spent the better half of three hours tonight taking my harness apart so that I could pin it out and see where everything went and make a video for you guys. The way if somebody needs to do this swap, they're not stuck with just the two companies that can do it. And they're like $600. It's really not that difficult. You gotta add in a couple relays. I wrote everything down. Um, I'm gonna try and like put it all in the description so that everybody can just go through there and see like step by step what wire goes to what. And I'm also gonna do, a, I guess in this video, um, just point out what wires go where to the best that I can remember while looking at my list in the best that I can describe. So if you have any questions, let me know and I'll try and answer them the best that I can. All right, I'm gonna start off by saying that <clears throat> some of the stuff done on this harness is not how I would have done it. But we're gonna talk about a couple things in this video. Um, some of the important things are these connectors. So you have a gray connector, a black connector, another gray connector, which I reference this gray connector in my description because of this black and yellow wire right here. That is your starter signal wire. So on my list, you will see, you know, a red with white wire or white stripe on gray connector that doesn't have starter signal wire. And you have this long white connector that comes from underneath the dash. Your two relays, which the way that I have them written down is not like this, I don't like this. You have a peach colored connector and a blue connector. Then your OBD, which also some of these I do not like ground wires, and then your main ECU connector, and this pigtail right here goes to your throttle pedal. So we're going to start with the relays. This is my list. Sorry that my uh, handwriting sucks. Again, these right here, the way that I would have done this, they have it so it's one single wire that comes in as a signal. I don't like that. What I would have done is this top pin here and this top pin here need to go directly to battery source. And then this wire, that pin, and this pin need to be on key on and then the rest of it would go per my description. So you have your white with blue, pink, and then solid blue, and then solid white. On this one you have green with a white wire, or white stripe, and then white with a red stripe. There's a couple of these where Solid pink leading towards ECU, but stops at blue connector. That's going to be this wire right here. And then there's uh, no, not that one. Uh, right here, red wire, gray connector. 
which is this connector. So your red little white stripe goes through this harness up here and then it'll come into this right there. And then you have this blue one, which comes from here through the harness through there. Let's see if I pull on it. See it move? Well, obviously you can't answer me, but trust me, it moves. <clears throat> um, but again, like I said, I would I would switch these. I don't I don't like the way that is. I might switch it because I think that's stupid. Um, the same thing with some of these data connectors. They're kind of bunched up in there, and it's honestly not a good way to do it. So, you have your data line. That is your high-low data line. Those are for your CAN bus system, so that the OBD connector can actually communicate with the ECU. Um, your purple wire right here is your power on for the ECU. You have two thick wires. They're both black. One has a red stripe. They get cut from this connector right here. Those are your grounds to your ECU. You um, have those right down here. Cut from long under a nice dash. Two ground wires. And then you will need two ground wires for your OBD, which also, I don't like this, I would have ran individual grounds. Um, this purple wire, I think, should be on a key on direct. It shouldn't be, like, looped in with other things. That's just a bad way of doing it, in my eyes. I, I personally would put these two and these two wires all on a relay like that to where they would key on and have nice clean power when the ignition switch came on and then that would be a direct power from the ignition switch key on position nice and clean the black with yellow wire that's your starter signal that will come from your ignition switch directly to the starter it comes all the way through the harness it's actually kind of nice if I can find it. Oh, it's cut off. There's a connector right on the end that plugs directly into the starter. But I'm using the factory Miata um, starter signal, so I cut it off. I didn't need it. <clears throat> um, other than that, it's basically, and you can see I went through and highlighted everything, and I will put a, one of these that I didn't like highlight and stuff, because some of this is wrong, in the, uh, I'll edit one in after I do this video, after I print a new one, but, so we have... Again, I'll try and type all this out so that uh, you don't have to try and read my handwriting, but in case I miss something. Oh, the throttle pedal. Um, it comes directly out. So like the color that the wires are here whenever you cut it off from underneath the dash because this like comes out of the ECU and then it goes through a whole harness thing and it's a whole mess. So you would cut it here and then you cut it here wherever underneath the dash 
and then you splice it back together. But it's color for color connection, like you made it past kindergarten, you can handle that. It's not a big deal. You just splice them back together at the length that you need. This I didn't need a whole lot of length because it's a tiny core. So, <clears throat> yeah, um, there it is. Any questions, let me know. Like I said, there's only two companies that do it. Um, I don't, I don't think it's right that somebody should be able to charge you, you know, $600 or $500 or whatever for, because this is the hard part right here, the relays, and it's what, one, two, three, four, five, six wires, seven if you count the one ground, or the one in power, and then the rest of it's just power on. These are what control your throttle. So if you, you do all this, all of it, and it doesn't, it turns on and you get easy signal and all that stuff, but you press the gas and the, the throttle plate doesn't move, you can't hear it, this is where your problem is. You have a problem here. Um, whether it's one of the relays or your wiring. So, yeah. I forgot to mention that to use the wiring harness in this way, that you have to have the ECU tuned, which I would recommend doing anyways, but you have to have the Nissan anti-theft security system or NATS disabled, or else the car won't actually start and run no matter what you do. It'll spin over forever. It just won't actually start up. So, um, I used UpRev to do that. And I don't know of any other program that could be used on the DE, which is what this wiring harness is for. 